All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to more 428 Shibuya Scramble. My name is Raven from the Sky. And let's do this. We saw this already. All right, the assassin has gone quiet, sitting on a pile of crates. He seems lost in thought. Still, I don't dare try to get away. All I can do is stand and wait and mull over my own situation. Just who am I? I ask myself again and again. I am. I am. I am. Tama. Tama. I am. Tama? <laughs> oh, you gotta love his interests, dude. I turn at the sound of an exuberant voice and see Mr. Nagashita running my way, flailing his arm in a friendly greeting. I swear, this guy could wind up banished to the pits of hell and he'd still give it his all, day in and day out. Oh, thank goodness. It's you, Tama. I knew it. The man with the cane grumbles something incoherent and holsters his gun and flees the scene. Huh? Now you with some middle-aged guy? You look so sweet and innocent, but I guess you kind of get around, huh? Oh. <laughs> Boss. Nice timing. I do a little fist pump. Whatever he's doing here, I'm glad he drove off that guy with the gun. <laughs> hmm. What are you so happy about? Nagashita gives me a puzzled look. But he's promptly distracted by his own excitement. Well, anyway, never mind that, Tama. He shifts down to a conspiratorial whisper. You know, I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I was in such a tizzy over some silly scratch card with a magazine from a magazine. I can tell he knew he has news he's itching to tell me. Did something happen? Well, <laughs> he brings a hand to his mouth and giggles unsettlingly. I had a great little idea, a great way to strike it rich. I, I feel like I've heard this from you before. Mr. Nagashita shakes his head fervently, fervently. This time it's different. We're talking way more digits than before. Now try not to be too surprised, yeah? Spittle, <laughs> spittle flies from his mouth as he rattles on. Or, uh, it's okay to be surprised, actually. In fact, I'm guessing you're definitely going to be amazed this time, Tama. I can practically see the blank notes dancing in his eyes. Cut to the chase already. Was it you? What is it you want to tell me? This time, get this. I got a line on 10 million yen. He thrusts his index finger skyward, grinning ear to ear. Surprised now? Yeah, you are. And it doesn't require any capital. It's no risk, high return. It's a risk. All that competitive eating. In the world of equity investment, a wise investor weighs risk against the potential for return. Many heavily risky projects, however, yield little in the way of actual returns. Yep. Such cases are called high risk, low return. The inverse low risk, high return is quite rare. Yep. The idea of no risk, high return is simply absurd. I know. <laughs> yeah, you mean. 
That's what I said. That, it, it, it is a risk. It's always a risk. There's a crazy gleam in his eye. Oh man, I'm finally gonna get to be a part of a billionaires billionaires club. Hold on, is this the? Oh god, this is the bad ending. This is so ridiculous. I don't even have a snappy with the court board. Remind ten million, obviously, would make him a billionaire. By the way, you haven't seen Cheery, have you? We're gonna need her help to wrap up this ten million yen. Cheery? No, I haven't run into her since the sales demo. Hold up. Oh, this is going. Oh darn, well if you you so happen to see her, tell her to get in touch with me. That's the, the whole competitive eating thing. That's a bad ending. Let me play it out. It might not go that way. I still don't know what he's going on, going on about, but there's probably no harm in being helpful. Thank you, Chama. Guess I may as well give you a little hint. Uh, a hint? Yeah, yeah, a hint. Wanna hear it? Oh, uh, sure, thank you. No, not particularly. Oh, uh, sure, thank you. Well then, I guess I've got no choice. You put it that way, I just have to tell you. Mr. Nagashita clears his throat and proceeds to declaim in an affected tone. When the mighty stomach triumphs over the endless cavalcade of icebergs, the hero shall be blessed with fame and fortune. Huh? What the heck is that supposed to mean? It looks inchwardly amused at my question. It's part of a legend. You only need to remember that one verse for now. You're going to bear witness to history. I feel like this guy right out of some story himself. Anyway, thanks for helping me out with the cherry thing. Adios. Spanish for goodbye. The true meaning is closer to English farewell. In day-to-day -day interaction, most Spanish speakers use the word casio. Kyle. Adios. Can carry the connotation that you do not expect to see the addressee again. And then, like a whirlwind, Mr. Nagashita zooms away, leaving me alone in the alley. Whew! Suddenly, I feel totally exhausted. I let out a sigh and dropped on my knees. And that's when I notice a notebook on the ground at my feet. Did the assassin drop this? I pick it up and look inside. There's a photograph tucked inside the back cover. It shows three young people, two boys and a girl. What? Well, what do I do now? Do I go to the police? How would I even explain the situation? I can see it now. There's a killer out there, and he's after this person named Hitomi Osawa. And then the police would be like, who is that? And who exactly is after her? And then what would I say? Heck, they might even not, they might not even, even give me the time of day in the first place. Not only do I not have any idea who Hitomi Osawa is, I know nothing about the guy who's after her, except that he walks with a cane. I mean, I can't even tell him who I am. And probably shoo me, they probably shoo me away with, out of second thought. What am I supposed to do? I hang my head at a total loss. A necklace around my neck all sways idly to and fro. Keep out.
Oh, here we go. Run, the other guy who's looking for me too. Hey, Tommy, wait. As he ran along Coin Dory after Miku, Minokara heard someone shout out a familiar name. Hitomi? It was a pretty common name. Ordinarily, he would have given it a second thought, but he remembered that one of the Miss Minoriyama winners would name Hitomi Hosawa. That made him curious. A moment later, he heard a cell phone ringtone. He immediately recognized it as an Aya Kamiki song. His reporter's instincts tingled. He stopped to take a look around, and one young woman caught his eye almost immediately. He couldn't assume that any pretty girl he saw was Miss Midoriyama. After all, it'd be a little too convenient if he just so happened to run into her now. Still, it didn't cost him anything to ask, are you Hitomi Osawa? He might as well at least check. But to his own surprise, he hesitated in embarrassment. He'd never been too embarrassed to ask a question before. He didn't get a chance to contemplate that realization. Then the, yeah, the fan blew up. Yep. A massive fiery blast knocked him from his feet. A deafening roar set his, set his head throbbing. What was that? What's going on? He lay in the daze on the ground trying to wrap his mind around what had just happened. Behind him, there was a minivan fiercely ablaze. Minivan. An explosion. The first thing to pop in his mind was the attempted bioterrorist attack on Kus Kasumi Gaski two years earlier. An unoccupied minivan had exploded outside the MBD station. And afterward, a device meant to scatter a dangerous biological agent had been discovered near the subway. In the end, no one had been harmed, but there were rumors that the government had paid a terrorist organization to have some to keep it that way. Right now, Minokara was a, a stone's throw from Shibuya Prison. Could this be a repeat of the Kasumigaski attack? The entire area was in an uproar. People were running around in panic. We were proud to see several injured people lying on the ground and moving. And yet, despite the gravity of the situation, numerous onlookers were casually taking photos with their cell phones. We were proud got to his feet and went to try to get everyone away from the scene of the Hey, you guys, get back! There could be another bomb! We were proud looked around as he pushed back the crowd. He was getting a strong whip of his feet. He needed to write his copy ASAP, but he couldn't just turn his back on the situation now. Two young men were strolling toward him, burning gifts, and had to look at the and Lincoln. Whoa, what the heck? Is this for real? Ain't this dangerous? Like, for serious? <laughs> the pair tried to find an optimal vantage point. Hey! In the car, snap. Don't get any closer. He spread his arm wide and hold his back. The young men came to a halt, but otherwise paid him no heed. Oh, this is bad. This is real bad. I think this is a terrorist thing. Look, get out your phone. Come on. But like, you think this is a terrorist thing? Dude, shut up. Just hurry up and call Susanu. The taller of the two dressed in red, ordering around his blue flag campaign. Huh? Boy and blue hub. Man, do it yourself. Say what now? <laughs> Yo, what the heck? Bitch, this ain't no time to get yourself all worked up. You know, kind of stood in the arms of her wide, getting more and more annoyed as they're back and forth. Yo, just make the call, man. The young fella in red scowled. He wasn't gonna back down. Huh? Yo, what difference does it make if I do it if you do it? It doesn't make any difference. So it doesn't matter if you do it. 
Yeah, right. It doesn't matter. So in that case, you do it. <laughs> but I'm telling you, just make the darn call. <laughs> and I'm telling you to just make it your darn self. Oh, enough of this already. And we're kind of opening the mouth to tell them off. But then the young man in red struck again. Dude, the goods from over at Indu Electronics are gone. You gotta let Susan know. Oh my god. The name Indu Electronics caught me in crowd's attention. Huh? Yeah, but ain't that all that Aichi's dude's fault? For getting all huffy at us? I mean, it was Kiru who told you just to go and find the Indu storehouse. Yeah, but Susan don't like dealing with stolen goods. Says it dirties the SOS name. Well, what a coincidence. Looks like these two are SOS members. Hey, Mineral Car called out. You two. They finally succeeded in getting their attention. Where's the Susumu fella? I'd like to talk to him. He had no idea who Susumu was, having only heard the name just now. Still, from the way these two were talking, it seemed clear he held some position of leadership. You think I'd tell you if he knew? Tell you if I knew the fellow Red Star, Minokara kept his composure. Listen, you guys know the Tiramu, Tirugumi, Tinrugumi. The Tinrugumi was a Yakuza syndicate that operated in Shibuya, an up-and-coming Yakuza syndicate that turned up on the scene ten years ago. Seemingly legitimate Takarada financing as its business front, the group offers monetary solutions to people in financial trouble. But those who accept their offer soon find that their troubles only grow and grow. Embroiled in conflict with Kanto Shiramani Gumi, who have been long established in Shibuya. These street kids were sure to be familiar with the name of nothing else. I may not look it, but I'm in pretty tight with the Tenru Gumi. And maybe you two don't know it. But Susumu's been showing up at their office a lot lately. Susumu's been dealing with the Yakuza? Whoa, for real? Sweet. The two punks bought it completely. What SOS music has their hangout these days? I've got a little something to discuss with Susumu. Hmm. Right now, it's this bar called Inferno. Minokara made a mental note of the name. Right, and Inferno was where exactly? The two young men suddenly looked distinctly uncomfortable. Um, uh oh. Later. Yeah, I got a thing I gotta do too. Backing away, they took off through the crowd. Hey, wait up! I need to know where Inferno is. The pair had already vanished. Ambulances began arriving at the scene and paramedics rushed out to tend to the wounded. Excuse me, would you mind answering a few questions? Minokara turned to see a man in the suit approach him flashing it with his badge. He jumped the camera. I might just go ahead and finish this up and then jump. So a detective with questions for him, huh? How about you answer a few questions for me? Was this an accident or an attack? We still don't know many details. Let me rephrase that for you. This is a major incident, Minokara exclaimed. Huh? The detective looked pretty flimmoxed. I've been around the block a few times and I know all your police PR lingo. And when you start talking about the details, quote unquote, that is 100% indicative of a major incident. Brushing aside Minokara's remark, the detective tried another question. Did you happen to notice anything unusual prior to the explosion? Unusual? Minokara thought back to the moments before the minivan exploded. Now that you mention it, I think I heard a cell phone ringtone. The detective tilted his head. A ringtone? No, never mind, forget that. There's no way the ringtone on someone's phone would be audible through all of that. Minokara struck the thought from his own mind as he said it. 
In all likelihood, he's associated with the ring, he associated with the ringtone and the explosion simply because one had happened right before the other. Kano, a large stature Caucasian man had called out to the detective. Evidently, the detective's name was Kano. Thank you for your cooperation, he said with a bow. Then he ran over to the foreigner. Mr. Minokawa. Minokawa turned at a female voice behind him. He found Miku standing there. She looked like she'd been crying. Miku, about earlier, I, uh, he trailed off searching for some for an apology. It's okay. That doesn't matter right now. Miku looked around the scene. Minokawa followed her gaze. Something big went down here, he said. I know, she exclaimed. The explosion. Saw it happen with my own eyes. You what? Miku looked around nervously. Are you all right? He asked her. You're not hurt, are you? I, I'm okay. My ears are still ringing a bit, that's all. Good. So what did you see at the time of the explosion? Miku assumed a thoughtful expression. It was this girl who was running toward the minivan. And then I think... I saw this other Middle Eastern girl suddenly make a dive for her, and then the van just exploded. Wait, hold on, Minokara said, so if I'm getting this right, it sounds like this Middle Eastern girl saved the girl who was running up to the van. Miku nodded. Just then, Minokara's phone chimed. He received an email. It was from Chaiki. Mr. Mino, are you still working on your copy? He checked his watch. At this point, the four o'clock deadline was barely 20 minutes away. Nonetheless, he decided to stay at the bomb scene. He could definitely smell a scoop here, and he was sure of it. Even if he couldn't get his six pages done by four, landing a major scoop should be enough to persuade the loan company. Minokawa jotted his phone number down and handed it to Miku. I'll make things up to you, he said. Give me a call later. Miku took the scrap of paper puzzle. If you're looking for an Aiki Jiu-Jitsu Dojo, I know a few. That her face lit up. Minokai decided to process the scene for clues. As he wandered around, he caught sight of Detective Kano and his Caucasian colleague heading down the alley. Hmm, what's that I smell? Something pretty damn fishy. If they were slipping away for a private conversation, maybe there was some way he could listen in. Minokai hurried into one of the buildings that bordered the alley. He looked around and found a public bathroom upstairs on the alley side of the building. Hoping beyond hope, he slipped up the bathroom window. Voices outside. He held his breath and listened. Those international criminals you mentioned. Kano's words were faint, but he could make them out. Minokawa did a little fist pump. Correct. Roughly eight hours ago, they infected Maria Osawa with the UA virus. Then they let her loose somewhere in Shibuya. Hold on. By UA, you mean. The discussion involved some terms Minokara wasn't familiar with. He focused all of his mental energy on what the two were saying. This is a killer virus with a 100% mortality rate once it takes hold. 100%? Minokara muttered to himself. The shock caused him to unclench the fist. He didn't realize he'd made. This wasn't just an intersecting, interesting conversation, I'm sorry. It was a, it was monumental. It has an incubation period of 12 hours. In another four hours, Maria Sara will go symptomatic. After that, she'll begin spraying the virus through the city. It's capable of airborne transmission. If we don't administer Kenji Osawa's antiviral before she develops symptoms, yes. Everyone in Shibuya is going to die. Minokara felt goosebumps rise all over his body. If they were talking about a virus and Kenji Osawa, they could only mean that Kenji Osawa. He recalled that Osawa had said earlier about the power balance of the world being at stake. There was no doubt about it. This was a tremendous scoop. Well then. We need to find Maria Osawa and get to get the antiviral to her as soon as possible. Just calm down. There's more to the story than... Oh, it's starting to leak out. The door swung open loudly and some 
Someone came barging into the bathroom. Ah, it was Nagashita. Why him again? And why here of all places? Ooh, I'm leaking here. Nagashita was on the verge of hy hysterics. His voice must have been audible outside. Kano and his companion went to take the discussion elsewhere. And they'd just been getting to the good part. You son of a gun! Enraged Minokawa grabbed Nagashita and tossed him to the floor. I'm leaking! Shut your mouth! He put all of his strength into the ankle hold and gave it a good twist. A professional wrestling technique that involves grabbing the opponent by the ankle. Being caught up like this can, ex is ex can be extremely painful. It also puts a lot of pressure on the lower body. And if you're already fighting the urge to urinate, well... <laughs> ah! Nagashita wailed. Ah! Minokara left the idiot blubbering in the bathroom and hurried out of the building. He hadn't heard the whole discussion, but he had a scoop on his hands anyway. This would be a tremendous score for heaven publishing enough to let the company rebuild. He was certain of it. And if I'm the one saying it, it's gotta be true. As he ran along, Minokara tried to plan his next steps. First, he had to get back to the editing office. He'd explain the situation to the people from the loan company. Then he'd go find that paperwork for Asawa and, and have Chaiki check his copy. And then after that, okay, so he still had a lot of things he needed to do. He swired himself on both sheets to get himself psyched up. His phone rang. It was Chaiki. Mr. Mino? Something terrible has happened. Chaiki's voice was a broken yelp. Whoa, calm down. Over on Coin Dory, this minivan exploded. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm well aware. Thanks to that, I've got a big scoop that Chaiki cut him off. Just now, I got a call from Mr. Toyama's daughter, Hannah. This time, Minokara waited for her to finish. He had a sinking feeling. She said that Mr. Toyama was in there. God, so he was the body. It was a suicide. Minokara's knees buckled. Tell me you're joking. No, I mean, the van explosion is all over the news. And Hannah was in tears on the phone. And Mr. Mino. Mr. Mino, are you still there? Toyama had killed himself. Oh, my God. Minokara felt the energy drain from his body. Bad ending? Nope, to be continued. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. My name is Raven from the Sky. If you enjoyed the episode, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to see the series grow. Take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace.